Hi. Today we will compare sale with other contracts, particularly with the Shon or Ajutika Shon and Pago, also known as the Shon in Payment, Payment by Session, Contract for a Piece of Work, Barter or Exchange, Contract to Sell, and finally, Agency to Sell. Let us begin. How do you distinguish sale from the Shon and Pago? First, as you learn in your obligations and contracts, the Shon and Pago is a special form of payment. Why is it special? Because instead of paying in money, the debtor pays in kind. That is why the law says that the Shon and Pago is governed by the law on sales. Nevertheless, the contract of sale is different from the Shon and Pago for the following reasons. Number one, in sale, there is no pre-existing credit. In other words, prior to the sale, the seller and the buyer are not obligated to each other. But in the case of the Shon and Pago, there is a pre-existing credit. That is why the Shon and Pago was resorted to to pay for this existing credit. Second, sale creates obligations, while the Shon and Pago extinguishes obligations. So in sale, the moment the buyer and the seller would come to an agreement, then this will result in obligations on the part of both parties. Of course, the seller is bound to deliver and transfer ownership while the buyer is bound to pay the purchase price. On the other hand, the Shun and Pago actually extinguishes obligations. That's why it is a form of payment and in fact, it is a special form of payment. Third distinction is this. In sale, from the seller's point of view, the cost or consideration is the price. Meaning to say, the reason why the seller is willing to deliver his property to the buyer and to transfer ownership of this property to the buyer is because of the purchase price. On the other hand, from the buyer's point of view, the cost or consideration is the delivery of the object. In other words, the reason why the buyer is willing to give his money to the seller is because of the object that the seller is supposed to deliver to the buyer. With regard to the Shon and Pago, from the debtor's point of view, the cost or consideration is the extinguishment of the obligation. Meaning to say, the reason why the debtor is willing to give his property to the creditor is because with the delivery of that property that will put an end to his obligation. On the other hand, from the creditor's point of view, the cost for consideration is the delivery of the object given as payment of the obligation. In other words, the reason why the creditor is willing to consider the obligation already extinguished is because of the object given by the debtor as payment of the obligation or the indebtedness. Then the fourth distinction between the two is that in the case of sale, there is a greater freedom to fix the price. In other words, in the contract of sale, there is this element of negotiation. Nakikipagtawaran sila sa isa't isa. But in the case of the Shon and Pago, there is less freedom to fix the price. Kasi nga, meron naman ng existing na utang. So kadalasan, kung magkano yung utang, yun na rin ang nagiging presyo ng property na ibibigay o ipambabayad ng debtor. And sometimes, it could be the value of the property 
could be less than the obligation. That is why, instead of a full or complete extinguishment of the obligation, nagkakaroon lang ng partial extinguishment or partial payment. Now, what about sale distinguished from payment by session? Again, as you learned in your obligations and contracts, payment by session is another special form of payment. When you say payment by session, basically it involves a debtor and two or more creditors. What happens here is that the debtor surrenders, the debtor assigns, the debtor cedes. That's why the word session. The debtor cedes his properties to the creditors so that the creditors can sell these properties and the proceeds will be used to satisfy their claims. But sale and payment by session are different for the following reasons. First, in sale, no pre-existing credit. Again, it means that prior to the contract, the parties are not obligated to each other. They have no pre-existing obligations to each other. But in the case of payment by session, there is a pre-existing credit. And that's the reason why this payment by session was resorted to in order to extinguish or put an end to this credit. Second distinction is that in the case of sale, sale creates obligations. That is, on the part of the buyer to pay the price and on the part of the seller to deliver the object and transfer its ownership. But in payment by session, it actually extinguishes obligation because, as we have said, it is a form of payment, a special form of payment for that matter. Third distinction is that from the seller's point of view, just like in the case of the Shun and Pago, the cost or consideration is the price. Again, it means that the reason why the seller is willing to give his property to the buyer, is willing to transfer ownership of this property to the buyer, is because of the payment he will receive from the buyer. On the other hand, from the buyer's point of view, the cost or consideration is the object to be delivered. This means that the reason why the buyer is willing to pay, the reason why the buyer is willing to part with his money is because of the object that the seller will give him. On the other hand, with regard to payment by session, from the debtor's point of view, the cost or consideration is the extinguishment of the obligation. Which means that the reason why the debtor is willing to give his property to the creditor is because it will result in the extinguishment or payment of his obligation. And from the creditor's point of view, the cost or consideration is the assignment of the things to be sold. Meaning to say, the creditors are willing to consider the obligation already paid, either fully or partially, is because of the properties that the debtor assigned to them so that they could sell these properties and apply the proceeds of the sale to satisfy their claims from the debtor. Then, fourth distinction is that in sale, there is greater freedom to fix the price. Again, as what we have said, in sale, there is this element of negotiation. Pwede pang magtawaran yung buyer and seller. But in the case of payment by session, although there could be freedom to fix the price, it could be a less freedom 
as compared to the contract of sale. Now, what about sale and contract for a piece of work? How are these two different from each other? First, in sale, the object or the thing is manufactured or procured for the general market. In other words, that object, that thing, is for sale to the general market, to the public at large. But in the contract for a piece of work, the object or thing is manufactured not for the general market, not for the public at large, but for the special purpose or needs of the customer. Second, in sale, the object or thing is in existence. Nandun na. No? Even if in the meantime, it is not available to the buyer wanting to buy that object. So what is important is that uh, it is already available, it is already being offered to the general market. But in the case of contract for a piece of work, the object or thing is one not in existence and would have never existed if not for the order of the customer who wants to have that object. So, ito yung tinatawag natin na uh, uh, tailor-made for the to, to cater to that partic to the particular need of the customer. Third distinction. In sale, the buyer bears the risk of the loss of the thing before it is delivered. No, kung mawala yung property before it is delivered, who will suffer the loss? Under the law, the buyer suffers the loss. But in the contract for a piece of work, it is the customer who bears the risk of loss. If this will take place before the delivery. Furthermore, in the case of sale, this contract is covered by the statute of frauds. Again, you learn in your obligations and contracts this statute of frauds. So basically, when you say statute of frauds, uh, this provides that certain contracts must be in writing. Or at least there is a note or a memorandum that proves that that contract exists. Otherwise, if the contract is not in writing or there is no note or memorandum, the contract cannot be implemented, the contract cannot be enforced. So basically, that is the meaning of statute of frauds. But in the case of a contract for a piece of work, this contract is not covered by the statute of frauds. So let me give you a situation. Let us say optical shop. May pumasok na customer. Nagtatanong kung pwede siyang magpagawa ng salamin na may grado na 200 by 200. If it is common for that optical shop to sell lens na may grado na 200, then that is a contract of sale. Even if, let us say, at the time na nag-order yung customer, wala or naubos yung stock or supply ng shop. So under the law, even if that is not available at that time, for as long as it was being offered to the general market, then it is considered sale, not a contract for a piece of work. But suppose, may pumasok na customer. Hindi lang dalawa, kung hindi tatlo yung mata niya. Literally, meron siyang third eye. Gusto niya magpagawa ng salamin. Pero, yung optical shop, walang mga frame ta para sa tatlo ang mata. So, ang ginawa ng optical shop, gumawa ng frame na may tatlong lenses. Is that a contract of sale or a contract for a piece of work? You will notice... It is common for that shop to make or manufacture and sell frames. But in that situation, 
the shop made a frame that has three lenses in order to cater to the special needs or special condition of that customer. So in which case, since it is not usual for that shop to sell to the general market eyeglasses that have three lenses, then the contract between that shop and that customer who has three eyes is considered to be a contract for a piece of work. Next, how do you distinguish sale from barter or exchange? Well, sale, in the case of sale, the cost or consideration is money. In the case of barter or exchange, the cost or consideration is another object. But suppose, aside from an object, money is also given as payment. Is it sale or is it barter? Well, under Article 1468 of the Civil Code, there are certain rules to be followed in case the consideration is not wholly in, in object or property, but it is a combination of object and money. Sabi ng 1468, first, let us determine the manifest intention of the parties. In other words, tignan natin, ano ba talaga ang gustong mangyari ng parties? Do they want their transaction to be a sale? Or do they want it to be a barter or exchange? So, if it is clear that the intention is sale, then so be it. Otherwise, if it is clear that the intention is a barter or exchange, then it should be treated as such. But in instances, when the party's intention is not clear, then you have to apply the following rules. First, if the value of the thing given as part of the consideration exceeds the amount of the money or its equivalent, then the contract is barter. On the other hand, if the amount of money is equal to or more than the value of the thing given as part of the consideration, then it is sale. Let me give you a situation. Assuming that the object or subject matter is a laptop computer worth 18,000 pesos. If the payment is 18,000 pesos cash, then the contract is sale because the consideration is money. As we have learned in Article 1458, the payment must be payment in money or equivalent of money. So in this case, since what was paid is money, then the contract is sale. But what if the payment is 15,000 pesos cash, plus a cell phone worth 3,000 pesos. Is the contract a sale or a barter? The contract is a sale. Why? Because the amount of money, 15,000 pesos, is worth than the value of the cell phone, which is 3,000 pesos. Suppose it is the other way around. Let us say, the money used to pay the computer is 5,000 pesos cash. Together with this 5,000 pesos cash is a cell phone worth 13,000 pesos. So is the contract a barter or a sale? It is a barter. Why? Because the value of the cell phone, which is 13,000 pesos, is more than the amount of the money, which is the 5,000 pesos cash.
So those are the rules to be followed in case it is not clear whether the parties intended the contract to be a sale or a barter or exchange. What about sale distinguished from the contract to sell? These two are different for the following reasons. First, in sale, the ownership of the object passes to the buyer upon the delivery of the object. In other words, from the moment it is delivered, ownership is also transferred to the buyer as a general rule because as we go along, we will discuss certain exceptions. On the other hand, in contract to sell, by agreement of the parties, even if the object is already delivered to the buyer, the ownership remains with the seller. In other words, the delivery of the property is not equivalent to or does not result in the transfer of ownership of that property until after the buyer is able to pay the purchase price. So here, the seller remains the owner of the property. Second distinction between sale and contract to sell is this. In sale, if the buyer fails to pay the purchase price of the thing delivered, the ownership does not automatically revert to the seller. In other words, kung hindi makabayad si buyer, hindi automatic na malilipat ulit yung pagmamayari ng property kay seller. What the seller must do is ipawalang visa niya muna yung kontrata. And only after the contract is cancelled or rescinded can the seller recover the property. Hindi yung basta-basta na lang siyang pupunta kay buyer aagawin niya yung property kay buyer. Bawal yun. It is possible na ma-charge pa si seller ng robbery or theft or whatever crime involving property. So, that is not the remedy of the, of the seller. What the seller must do first, go to court, seek the annulment or rescission or cancellation of the contract and only after the contract is cancelled, can the seller recover the property. But in the case of contract to sell, since delivery of the object does not result in transfer of ownership to the buyer, in case the buyer failed to pay the purchase price, or in case the buyer failed to fulfill the condition of the sale, the seller can recover the property. In other words, the non-fulfillment of the condition, for example, the non-payment of the purchase price, is a resolutory condition. Now, you know resolutory condition in your oblicon. It is a resolutory condition that put an end to the obligation of the seller to transfer ownership of the property to the buyer. So in this situation, the seller can demand the return of the object. Third distinction is this. In sale, the buyer bears the risk of the loss of the thing. In other words, if the object was lost uh, before it is delivered, then the buyer suffers the loss. In the contract of sale, since ownership remains with the seller, if the property was lost, it is the seller who has to suffer the loss of that object. Then finally, what about sale from agency to sell? Under Article 1466. Now, in sale, when the buyer receives the object, he receives it as owner. 
In agency to sell, when the agent receives the object from the owner, he receives it not as the new owner, but only as agent of the principal. In other words, it is still the principal who retains ownership of the object. Second, in sale, the buyer must pay the purchase price. But in agency to sell, the agent must account for the purchase price received from the buyer. In other words, kung naibenta niya yung property, then yung napagbentahan niya, dapat niyang ibigay dun sa kanyang principal na may-ari nung property. Third distinction is that, as a general rule in sale, the buyer cannot return the object sold. Take note, this is just a general rule. As we go along in the study of this course, we will note, we will uh, discuss exceptions to this rule. In agency to sell, the agent can return the object if he was not able to sell it. Fourth distinction, in sale, the seller assumes some warranties. Example of these are warranties against hidden defects, warranties against uh, eviction. In agency to sell, the agent does not assume these warranties.